Hi guys, welcome to this Structural BIM tutorial and today I'm going to take a look at how we can animate the erection sequence of this cold roll joint in Fusion 360. So I've done a previous tutorial of how to export an advanced steel model into Fusion 360. Check out the link on the screen now if you want to know how to do that. Um, uh, once we've got that done, I've taken the Aegis file into Fusion 360, and this is currently what we have. So it's a double purlin sleeve joint with stays, and I'm going to animate the pieces coming together, and it'll look as if it shows the erection sequence. So first things first, when it comes in to Fusion 360, everything comes in as a body. And for the animation to work, these bodies, these are the individual components, must be converted to components. So simply select them in the browser, right click, and you can create components from bodies. And it looks as if nothing happens except they change to bodies. Then when we switch the interface down to animation, you will see we now have the components listed. So that's the first rule, they must be components for us to start the animation sequence. So I'm just going to reposition my animation timeline. I like to minimize it, then drag it to the bottom of the screen and then it will dock and then I can expand it back up. So a little bit about the timeline. Timeline is based upon a series of storyboards. So you can create each section of the animation within individual storyboards and then they can be combined together. In this instance, I'm going to just create a single storyboard. So you can right click it and you can rename and I can just call it Perlin Animation. So the way that the animation timeline goes. You've got this section here, so this is what we call the scratch zone. And the scratch zone is used when we do, want, do not want to capture any actions within the screen. So you can simply move the playhead left and right, so you can drop it in to the scratch zone. And basically what means is that nothing will record as we orbit, model, change, or animate anything around the scene. So the way that this works is that you basically drag this out for the length of time that you want to show. So you can see as we move it along, the length of time is 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and you can change that. So if we want something, let's say 10 seconds long, and we just orbit the model like so, you will see that it has automatically recorded something within the timeline. If you hit this play button, you will see it will slowly start to animate that change across that particular length of time. You can hit spacebar and spacebar will do the same. It will play and pause that current animation. You can select that particular segment in the timeline, right click and click delete and now we're back to normal. So the scratch zone is used for where we don't want to actually record anything on the screen. We then have the individual components, which we can start to animate. So the way that this works is that we're going to create an action for each of the components. And you can see that the current model is assembled. So we need to sort of build this in reverse. So if I select this component first and I drag the timeline out, let's say to three seconds, You've got two options here. So what we want to do is build this in reverse so this purlin will slide in from the left. So you can use, if you right click, you can use a manual explode or you can shortcut the keyboard entry E. And if I do that, you will see that it brings up this axis. And this axis allows us to define the direction of the animation. So if I choose the arrow to the left and you'll see you get a little slider and I can actually control the distance that it is sliding out. So if we put it to there, we click the green tick, we have now animated that distance. You'll see in the timeline, if we click into it, we can change the scale of the view. You can see currently it's like up to two minutes 40, but if I just zoom in, you will see that it increases the timeline. So now we get a much more detailed and shorter length. So you can see we've currently animated this movement for 0 0.5 of a second. If we hit the play button, you will see that within that half second, the purlin slides out. 
If we want to increase the length of that time, you can select the bar in the timeline and use the grab, or you can just simply grab that timeline to two seconds, and then we click play. You'll see now it will be a much slower animation. If we want to animate the other side, you simply move the playhead, let's say to 3.5 seconds, select the element, keyboard shortcut E, and then we can choose the direction, and then we can simply slide the object out to there. Then when we update the green tick, you can see you can then move these around as you want on the playhead. So then we can increase this out, let's say to 3.5 seconds. And we can hit play and you will see the first one will go, then the second one. If we want to start overlapping, we can simply move them along the playhead. So after 0.5 of a second, and we can be a little bit more accurate. So after three seconds, so you can see we've got a overlap of 0.5 of a second. So when we hit play, first one, then the second one. So it all depends on the sequence in which, in which you want to work. So I might limit these to a second each. And we will have no overlap and we will just do something like that. And then we click play and you will see that this is now what's happening. If you want to edit each of the animations, you can select the object in the playhead, right click and you can edit the action. And you can actually go in and actually start to define the exact distances. So if I want to say, well, that needs to move exactly one meter, you can simply type the distance, click OK, select this one, edit action, and we can say that one can change by one meter. Now when we click play, one, then two. If we want to look at the sleeve, I'm going to select it, keyboard shortcut E, that direction, and then we can explode it that direction, click the green tick, and you will see this is now this action, and I'm just going to edit it and just control that I want that to go, let's say, 600. So now when we click play, we've got Perlin, Perlin, sleeve. If we now look at the stays, so I can do this one first. If you want to control it first, you can just move the, the playhead to where you want it to go and that will track that. So then we go E for explode. I'm going to push it back in that direction. And then you can manually explode it out. And if you want to change it, we can edit the action and we could say I want to make that minus 500. And then we can move that along the timeline. If we want to do this one, E for explode, that direction, and then we can move it out. And then if we want to just time it along, right click, and we say minus 500. Click OK. So now we have that, and if we click play, we will now see this, so Perlin, Perlin, sleeve, stay one, stay two. So you'll notice that in all of this process, I have not moved or orbited the view. If we move or orbited to view, it will record it. And that is because we have a button up here, and you can see that the view is recording. It is the same principle of going back to the scratch zone. So if I click this, it will say view is not recording. So then I can zoom in for more in for clarity on the bolts. So I just want to come around here just to make sure I select these bolts. So the view is not recording, but I can still record the animation. So I move this to six seconds, select this bolt, E for explode. I want the bolt to go in this direction. You can see I can move it to there. That will have recorded that bolt. I can right click and edit the action and I want all bolts to come from 200 millimeters away. Move that to here. And again, I just test everything as I go. So that's purling, purling, stay, stay, and then the bolt. If I choose this next bolt, again, same principle, E, and I'm just going to slide it out. You can see that's here and I'm just gonna edit so everything is the same. I'm going to do this one, so same principle. Just drag them out and select this timeline, so it's 200. 
and it's this one. And you tend to just drag this out a little bit and then back and it will animate and then drag this across to here, edit the action and again just choose 200 then it's this one. You can see each time it just adds it to the timeline and automatically increases the length of the full file and then we are this one so it's E for explode edit action 200 and then we will do this one E for explode drag out and then position on the timeline and then just edit the length of time and the last bolt so if we just play that let's have a look Now you'll see in all of my haste, I've missed the stay bolts, so I can do them and then we can position them into position. So E for explode, they're gonna come out this way. And the view is not recording, so I can orbit it round, select this bolt, do the same. Edit the action. And then we are at 200. And we click play, so it's one. Okay, so there we go. So what I may do is I'm just going to increase this up so you can see the timeline. So these are the last two, but I want these done together. So I'm just going to simply drag them together and I've got them in the wrong position so I'm just going to move them across the timeline so you can see as you can select each item you can see where they should be so that's the last stay and I want to position that here and I want to have a slight overlap so as the stays are going into position so now when we click play If we zoom out, you can then click play. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm just going to have an overlap on the bolts. So I don't want to have a half a second for each individual bolt. So you can see there is the first bolt. And then I'm just going to simply just have these overlapping by a quarter of a second or half a second. So just, I don't need to see all this animation. So then when we zoom out and we have a look at the complete system. So this is what we've got. So we've got the purlins, everything working. And you can see that it just animates that a little bit quicker with the bolts overlapping. So up until now, everything is in reverse. So what we can do is instead of rejigging all of this, we can right click on the storyboard and then just simply reverse. And it just completely changes the direction of everything. Then when we click play, you will now see that everything is going in the right direction. So what we need to now do is just drag these into position. So I wanna put this first, that second, third, fourth like so and we just have that and then we just so if we look at the that's the second stage so this is the first bolt and then we just position these here and then I can start the overlap like that 
So it's a bit of a strange one because we've got an assembled part and we want to disassemble it and then show that sequence. We have to sort of do it in a, a little bit of an unorthodox way. So that's currently what we have. I'm just going to drag this down so we've got a little bit more visibility. So this is currently what's happening if we click play. So one, two, then this stay goes in, then all the bolts. And you can see we've sort of done the sequence. So now what we can start to do is actually start to look at what view do we want to work when this is all animated. So we've got the actions working. So let's look at creating actually. Let's I want it sort of to orbit around. So you can see the playhead is here and I'm just going to click on the recording. And basically what I want to happen is I want to zoom in a little bit and then just orbit round. So I just see that. You can see that has recorded that action. So if we click play, you'll see nothing will happen until it gets to that particular recording action. And you can see that it's zoomed in. So what we can do, instead of having this at the very end, I can stretch this and play this across the complete animation. So now when I click play, you will now see it We'll zoom around, put everything in, and there we have it. It's as simple as that. You can add in as many different camera views if you want, if you want to change something. So we can take this back to here, put in a completely different video recording. Remember the view is still recording, so if I orbit around again, it will put in a second recording where we can stretch that to there then when we play the full thing so we've got the actions working where the components are coming together and then we've got various different views happening so that's pretty much the beginner guide to getting it all working so i've used just the manual explode in my next video i will take you through the transform components where we can do a little bit more um, in terms of the animation um, one final thing to finish, when we want to produce this as a video file, it's a simple case of selecting publish, publish video. You can see it's the current storyboard or all storyboards. You choose our video resolution. So I'm going to go with the 1920 by 1080. Click OK. It gives it a name. The file type is an AVI. I'm going to save it to my computer. Click Save. And it will begin the rendering process. So now let's check the animation. We click into Windows Explorer, double click our file, and here we go. So there you have it, an introduction to animation using Advanced Steel and Fusion 360. So don't forget to like and subscribe and join me again soon.